Hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints. In this episode, I'm excited to share my conversation with Andrew from Butters Barbecue in Mathis, Texas. Mathis is about an hour and a half to two hours from San Antonio, two and a half to three hours from Austin. This one is interesting because uh, his story, Andrew's story, and his introduction to barbecue was like a lot of people's introduction to barbecue. And, it, and it's it's strange because in Texas, you assume that everyone's had Central Texas-style barbecue, meat market-style Texas barbecue, when in reality, outside of Austin and outside of uh, Central Texas, barbecue is different. It's uh, served differently. And so his first introduction was at Franklin Barbecue, and he was blown away. But it, it, it's interesting because when I went to Texas and worked there for a year, I had never... I'm coming from California. I had never even seen how brisket's cut properly, how it's plated. I, I, I saw platters, but I never watched it <laughs> plated or or knew about uh, scratch-made sausage, how simple and delicious pork ribs can be. Uh, I've always had them slathered in sauce. and So it, it's interesting how he shares that same understanding and he that a same epiphany for a Central Texas-style barbecue that I had that so many, so many people have had. And it's interesting, he... He worked at a refinery at a young age, the age 19, and then he had this epiphany over Texas-style barbecue, and he decided to make his own pit and then sell barbecue, and then eventually he got a pit from Primitive Pits, from JD at Primitive Pits, and uh, so that way he could up his capacity, and it's good because they made the Texas Monthly Top 25 New Barbecue Joints list this spring, so uh, his, his business has, has boomed, and it, he had a visit from Daniel Vaughn, and that, that helped spark a lot of things like it does for so many barbecue joints across Texas and outside of Texas. But I know you're going to really enjoy this. Its food looks amazing. It sounds amazing. They have barbecue on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, it's worth the drive, and it's definitely worth visiting Andrew and, and telling him that you said hello and uh, get trying his food. I, I know he'd appreciate it. He's a nice guy, and I know you're going to love this interview. And this episode of the Kevin's Barbecue Joints podcast is brought to you by The Smoke Sheet. The Smoke Sheet is available at bbqnewsletter.com. It's a weekly newsletter. comes in your inbox on Wednesdays, and it's just really great. It's... <laughs> I know I've said it a million times. If you've listened to this podcast, you know I'm a big fan of it. I've been a fan since day one, and I'm glad that we partnered up because they are working hard. It's they being Ryan Cooper, who is at BBQ Tourist, and Sean Ludwig, who is at NYC BBQ. The two of them travel so much. If you follow them on social media, you'll see that they're somewhere all the time. I don't even know how they sleep. Sean covers the East Coast and New York so extensively, and they do. he travels outside of that area too. But And then Ryan, he travels all over the place. <laughs> it's like they have the same addiction that we all have, and it's, it's a great, it's a great news source. They do lots of original content now. And at the beginning, they were doing little. Now they do tons. And so it's it's got original content, which is worth reading, and you'll like it, as well as information on new barbecue joints and closures and where people are moving from barbecue joint or opening new ones up a second location. Uh, they have information on barbecue YouTube stuff, on podcasts like the one that you're listening to or the YouTube stuff that you're watching, uh, Vimeo stuff, as well as a barbecue recipe of the week. Chock, chock full of tons of information. Again, it's available at bbqnewsletter.com. That's bbqnewsletter.com. The smoke sheet is barbecue news worth consuming. Check it out. And if you're digging these, I would like it if you would subscribe. That way you don't miss out. I do at least one or two of these per week, if not more. I have a YouTube channel. If you're listening to us on podcasts only at youtube.com slash Kevin's BBQ Joints. With the YouTube version of this, as well as visits to butcher shops and barbecue joints and tons of cool stuff. And then also, I have a website at kevinsbbqjoints.com with links to all the podcasts, links to all the YouTube stuff, original content, lists of barbecue pop-ups and underground stuff in Los Angeles, and tons of new content coming out. So I want you guys to check that out. Head over there. And then I'm available on all the social medias at, at kevinsbbqjoints, all one word. Check me out, send me a message, but thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it, and uh, maybe I'll see you out on the barbecue trail someday. Thanks so much. Well, good evening. How you doing? I'm doing fine. How you doing? <laughs> doing well. Sorry. A little, we always do like a little formality. Not like I could just jump into yeah. this. Bro. So, so, what's, so you said uh, you finished up your day. What was today like? Uh, it was good. We sold about 11 briskets today. Okay. Um, so that's, that's pretty much the average when it comes to like a Wednesday, Thursday. We start to cook a little bit more come Friday night for Saturday and then um, more on Saturday night for Sunday. Sunday is just our, our busiest day by far. What are you looking at on Sunday, like about 
over 20? I, I've seen 18, but on average, we're doing about 15, 16. Okay. That's a decent uh, amount. That's a good amount. Yeah, it's pretty. It's 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 called for the new uh a new, the new pit. We got a a pit from Primitive Pits. I don't know if you saw that recently. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so what we do with that is we run it Friday because come Saturday we're cooking the barbacoa and the uh, more briskets. It just doesn't fit on the five hundred. Okay, so right now, what do you have? You have a five hundred. I have a five hundred that was built custom. Um, like just. We had no schematics on it. We bought a tank. We bought, you know what I mean? We bought two tanks and wow. some pipe in a stack. And we had a welder, um, a good friend of ours, Bobby from Edroid, slap it together for us. And uh, and it works. It works well. You know what I mean? It works. But did you know how to build a pit prior to that? No, but I mean, the, the uh, they look pretty, I mean, an offset burner is an offset. You got, for you sure. Got, yeah. you pop, pop. So, uh that's how we just kind of just based the design. We did a 500 with two doors with the semi-insulated firebox with the 10 inch stack to an eight inch reducer. Um, and I mean, it, it holds well. We have one temperature cage on it. Wow, it's a that's cool. Tight. That's awesome though. Yeah, so I mean, it's, that's how we, that's how we've done it for the first two years prior. And then we got the, the, uh, pit from, from primitive and we started running it on the weekends and, uh, it, it works well. It works damn good. You know what I mean? And uh, it eats a lot more wood. Well, I say that, but it's in compared to the 500 that we've been running. So, And that's 1,000? Yeah. We, we got a 1K. Okay. A 1K. Yeah. To patino offset. We got some upper racks on it. Be- beautiful. JD's pits are, are beautiful. They're gorgeous. And, and he, he, he has the mind for like the thermodynamics and all that crazy stuff. Yeah. Thing. Well, I mean, you got that. You, we, uh, we've been running it for almost a month now on the weekends. And it's it it I, I love it i love it it just it works well it's very even you know what i mean it's got a lot more gauges on there compared to just the one that we're <laughs> you know, the 500 so we get to see okay well we know where every pit has a cool spot you know what i mean so we figure out this is where this at we put certain foods there yeah. versus in the back so it, it's it's been working out well for us well it's interesting too that, that you say that when you design your own pit because i think there's a lot of people that listen to these or watch these that don't know how to make the next step or they've contacted some of these pit makers and they're way out maybe a year or two years. JD, JD's not out, out that far right now because he's scheduling things uh, like a month or two in advance. But if they can't yeah. do that, then then ha- I guess you could go the route you did and get find yourself a propane tank, find a welder if you know one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, yeah. it's doable. It's- yeah, I, I could see. Yeah, I'm thinking about it now that the way in your, in your words, it, it, it did seem a little... Uh, crazy to do it that way i just we were just so it was just all so new to me i didn't know about a lot of these uh pit places yeah. you know that, that, that made the, the type of smokers i just thought hey look they're all using these kind of types of smokers no. it, it's not that hard to find a propane tank and you know uh living in you know texas especially the south there's a lot of welders you know yeah yeah where, where are you where are you located for sure right yeah i mean we're you know out of we're 30 miles uh north of corpus christi and mathis um, it's an industrial type city. You know what I mean? There's just a lot of work going on out there as far as industry goes. I, that's what I did prior to this. I worked at uh, a plant. I did plant work. It, it was for what? For jet? Did it, was it for jet fuel? Is that what I? Did? So I was I was a, a unit operator, process operator for for uh, one of the major refineries out there, Flint Hills Resources, and I did that when I right out of high school. I mean, it's kind of what I decided to go to school for, uh, more of a trade type yeah. thing, and uh, which is really smart, I think. Yeah, I, you know, at 19, I was working at, at the the, um, the refinery, kind of like a, uh, while I was in school. So they, they allowed me to finish school and then uh, move into that position when I finally got my... Wow. Yeah, so it was, it was just kind of a cool thing. And I, I spent seven years out there between two companies. I did make a, a switch four years after and uh, to a different company within the same plant. I tw- and I started, I've always, you know what I mean? The barbecue's always been there. I did, did it with my dad growing up. He did a lot of caterings. Uh, cook-offs, he, he cooked a really good brisket, but he did a lot of the more southern type. He used mesquite. So he, was he more direct heat, or was he doing offset stuff? So he just had a 30-inch straight pipe <laughs> with a stack, and he would put his coals on one side and put his brisket. He wouldn't trim them. He would just throw some rub on it, and a couple hours in, he would uh, maybe four hours in, wrap it in some foil and poke it. And, All right, it's done. You know what I mean? <laughs> type. Exactly. And it was damn. It was damn. He won a lot of co- uh, cook-off competitions with it, so that's uh, but that was the only kind of barbecue that we knew, that I knew at least growing up was his. So I started, when I was working at the plant, um, I had a real good friend, Ray, Ray Schaefer. He uh, 
he told me about, you know, barbecues. He's like, have you ever been to, to Austin? And I'm like, he's like, there's a place called Franklin's. It's got the best barbecue in the world. I'm like, what? You know what I mean? Like, come on. You're like, I've had barbecue. I don't, what, how yeah, could it be like, different? How could it be, right? So then uh, I, I had to know, like, yeah, people wait in line hours. Like, you're telling me people are waiting outside for hours for, for barbecue. He's like, yeah, I'm like, okay, I got to go. I, I just have to, mm -hmm. I have to, the curiosity was like, what the hell's happening over there? And me and my buddy went for the first time, Isaiah. We left Mathis at 5 a.m. We got to Austin somewhere around 8.15. And then um, we waited in line at, until about 1.15, if I recall correctly. And uh, So you were like halfway back or something, right, in line? I think I was about, if I had to, I think I was about maybe 30 to 40 percent. It was in the, it was on a Friday, so it wasn't too, too bad. Um, I was blown away. I was like, holy hell. You know what I mean? I was like, everything was just so so good and i'm just like i started like it just kind of blew my mind i'm like what what the hell i remember telling my buddy isaiah i'm like man i'm gonna try to make a brisket that good i want to have a brisket that everything the pork ribs the turkey i just i was it was just kind of a different experience for me because i know it's in this within the same state but that barbecue doesn't exist down mm -hmm. down here very well it didn't you know what i mean but back in when i was what was it maybe three or four years ago no. Um, yeah. And there's, so, and there's and, even, there's not a ton, there's not a 10 today either. Yeah. So, so then I just, I remember coming back and telling my dad, I remember I brought him some, I was like, dude, try this. And he ate it. He was like, and even though it was reheated, he was like, oh, wow. You know what I mean? He's like, something that, different. That, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just the smoke. I remember it's weird because I don't have much to taste for it now being around it so much. Um, but I remember just the saltiness and the pepper, the bark is something that really like, wow, check mm -hmm. out this real crunchy tech, I, you know, Texas style in that, you know what I mean? And then I got to a pork rib. We ate about half of the platter before we realized we didn't even use sauce. So I was like, you know, we didn't get the sauce and hadn't even ate the potato. So it was just, a, it was a crazy experience. So when we, we went back again the following year. And then at that point I told my, my I went with my buddy Austin and I told him, uh, you went to Austin with Austin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a good friend of mine, and I I told him nobody's doing that down in the south. If somebody would do that, they might, you know, do do pretty decent, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so then working at the plant, I just kind of I just you know, I called my dad one day. And I was like, hey, let's uh let's get a pit built, you know, let's let's try and do a little business. I I wasn't sure what exactly I was trying to do. I was just like, you know what, I I like this barbecue. I want to get a pit built. Let's try and let's try at least for this. yourself, so I, right? Like at least cooking for yourself, yeah, yeah. which would be nice. Like, yeah, for friends and family. And exactly that. I found a local wood supplier out of Orange Grove, which is, which is where I live now. It's, it's about 12 miles from that. This is skipping okay. a hop away. And he has, po he had post oak wood. I remember getting on Craigslist, uh, post, post oak wood. And there's just one guy, you know what I mean? Just, uh, and that's where I've been getting it from ever since. It's been almost three years now. What's the name of his place? Uh, I don't think he has an official name. He just has. He just, oh, just a guy. Yeah, he's just a guy that, that's, that sells wood. That's what he does. He does mesquite and everything. And, and uh, he's so we we've been ordering so we order so much, you know, mm -hmm. that instead of he used to bring it back to his yard and stock it, he just goes to his location and brings it back. He goes all the way up to like near the grain, somewhere around there. So now, what, what was, what, so how did you start doing So then a, we ended up getting the pit built and then I realized I was like, hey, let's, let's try, let's, let's get a, let's try and get a business. Let's start a barbecue business. You know, at that point I had already been cooking and felt, you know, confident enough, like, hey, this, this could sell. We were using, you know, Angus Prime Brisket you know, the trim and real well. Did you watch uh, Aaron's videos or were you, did you get his book? Or I seen a few videos. I, I read uh, the manifesto, the meat smoking manifesto. I got, I got a lot of good tips from there. Um, but it just came down to just doing it over and over and over. Uh, I found out that resting the brisket had a lot to do with how the end result is going to be. I learned that very quickly as well. So then at that point I was like, you know what? I think this is good enough. And we just, one thing happened to him next. Next thing I know, we're opening up. Really? And yeah, what you know, was we, this was this last year? August fifth of seventeen. Seventeen, just about two years ago. Yeah. August. 5th, it was a Saturday, and uh, where did you open up? How did you find the spot? I it, it was in town, so there's a corner spot. It's at an intersection, and uh, it's just been vacant. It would it it had been vacant for at least three years prior to us. It was a, it used to be a gas station, an old. An old Exxon way back when, 
And then um, it then sh- briefly after that, it became like a tax office for a little bit. And then it just sat va- vacant in, uh, in Mathis for, for years. And it, it became kind of a sort of an eyesore. The grass would get high. There'd be a lot of mud on there if it rained, you know, kind of a trench trap right through the front. So uh, it was just a vacant lot. And it seemed to be a pretty good part. There's only three street lights in, in, uh, in Mathis. So uh, it's walled out. It was technically the, you know what I mean? As far as the city goes, it's probably the best spot in Mathis. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, a, it's, had a, it's had a section of uh, a highway and, and Main Street, basically. So uh, if you, there's three street lights, you'll find us. Just get to the third one. So did you talk to them about putting it? I called him and I asked him, hey, what's the deal with the building? And he's like, yeah, it's for rent. Uh, this is, you know, X amount. So I was like, yeah, you know what? Let's let's give it a shot. I I tried to just be kind of basic about it. I found a, I found a fridge. I knew we would start very, very small, right? Mm. So I found a refrigerator. I found a hot box. Um, and just kind of just everything that we, we needed to just really, you know, get the business going. We got to register all our permits in line. And we were just ready to rock. And then we, that's when it started, you know, and it was two weeks. How did you publicize it? Did you just tell friends or? Facebook. With Facebook. That's how we still do it. I mean, it's, it's the best to us. It's a, uh, you know, started so small instead of buying a, you know, five, six, seven hundred dollar bill, but we couldn't afford that. But what we could afford is a six dollar Facebook ad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, Facebook ad. and you know what I mean? It, 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 you just post an ad in certain regions and it reaches all the people who have Facebook. And, and so that's how we kind of hit it. And with daily specials, hey, we're going to be open this day. This is. And ever since then, we just kind of stayed in that corner and built around it. We finally put, uh, pavement down on, on it which was the biggest thing because it was just mud and every time it would it would get messy and, yeah it's just you know and it's just been a learning experience just from from here to then it's just been a lot of a lot of lows and then the, a lot of a lot of highs as well you know what what were some of the lows or the lows just days well, that I mean, were just, just not selling or business in general you know uh, this style is just it's still even two years later it's still so new and it's hard for some people to just kind of get a grasp. You know, we run out of meat sometimes. Yeah. We run out of, and they just, you mean it's four o'clock on a Saturday. How can you possibly, and I'm like, well, we were just really busy. It's just hard to, you know, gauge that. And, and, and some people get ticked off about it, but then we have a lot of people who are now starting to understand it's almost daily. We'll get calls, multiple calls. Hey, what do you got left? Hey, where are you at? I'm, I'm getting off of work. How many briskets do you See, might that's have? That's great. That's nice. Yeah, so it's 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 been nice to to see that. What were you selling at first? So we started. We were selling brisket, um, pork ribs. We had we were buying B and V sausage. It's a brand a brand of sausage. We do homemade now, but at that point we had we didn't make it yet. Yeah. Um, chicken, and I think that was it. We we weren't doing turkey breasts or beef ribs or barbecue. We just kind of kept it really basic. Mm-hmm. Uh, with sandwiches, the biggest seller. You know, still to this day is the brisket sandwich. You know what I mean? It's it has been in the beginning, and it's, how do you prepare that? Just a basic sandwich, or does it have? It's a, it's a gr- we do a grilled bun with some cold pickles and onions, and we do the pickled jalapenos as well, all the way. We call it all the way, and uh, with with without sauce, and that thing just we can't sell enough. We sell a lot of those things. Well, yeah, and it's like pop, kind of like a perfect like grab and go kind of thing. For it's people. yeah. So we have a drive through um, in the back of the building. Which is kind of become yeah, so it's kind of becoming a, uh, a not, I don't want to say issue, but it, it it is because on Sundays or, or even Saturday, just on any given day, if we get you know a few families up front and then cars start piling up in the drive through, you know what I mean? It's just, it, it can get a little hectic yeah. and people get a little um, uh, like they they get a little upset that we're kind of taking a while, you know. So but. So we kind of sometimes when we get busy enough, we'll have to just we'll just close the back window. Which yeah, I was going to say like you probably have to. There's like almost no way to get into that. And another thing is like uh, call-in orders are becoming an issue too because mm-hmm. we'll have people be calling in at you know at eleven o'clock. And, hey, I want to pick up some food at five p.m. I'm like, hey, I don't I don't even know if we're gonna have food yeah. at five p.m. So we're gonna. We're thinking about doing like a thirty-minute or less call-in. Like, hey, if you want, if you're going to call in, for that's the probably AD. smart. Yeah, that's like an f- interesting thing to yeah. balance and try to figure out. That's where we're at today with it, and then of course when Daniel Vaughn came in, changed everything. That, that, well, I know that yeah. I know that a lot of people out here will only do call-ins for 
like a whole brisket or a whole rack of ribs or whole and I, but I don't know if that's even something that can make sense in your area. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you can kind of understand it that way too. Uh, but we 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 do. I mean, so the call ins are like, we'll get a phone call like, hey, do we take this or not? In the hopes that it's something crazy, and then most of the time it's like, hey, it's a chop. Yeah, can I have a sandwich. Yeah, it's, a chop, <laughs> it's a chop sandwich. I'll be here in half an hour. So like, like oh that. damn. <laughs> It's just, it's, yeah, it's just really, it's hard to gauge. And, and like I said, it's still so new. So it's just taken people a while to, to, uh, adapt to it. But I think, I think, uh, we're moving along, I think pretty, pretty well. And especially with the new article, the top, top 25, you know, that we're still attracting new customers almost daily. Like, Oh, we heard about you. Oh, the magazine. We heard well, about that. Um, well, before, yeah. before we get into that real quick, um, what's Mathis like and how far away is it from, say from San Antonio, Austin and Houston? San, San Antonio, it's about an hour 30, an hour 45. Okay. It's about 100, 100 miles, I think, 110 miles. Austin, you're looking at, uh, it's about a, it's about a two and a half hour drive, okay. I'd say, to, to Austin. So, yeah, no, I'd say a three hour drive. Yeah, it's a three hour drive. But that's like Los Angeles to San Diego. People do that. That's not something that's. True, true. But imagine living in Austin and hearing about a barbecue place in Mathis. You're not going to make that trip. Yeah. You know, like, why would I? That's, you know no, that's I mean? okay, okay. But on the way to something, maybe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we get a lot of people that, hey, we're traveling from Corpus to San Antonio. True. And they'll they'll make that, you know what I mean, that, that cruise through town. Um, still to this day, a lot of our, you know, most of our business is, is people from out of town. It's kind of, kind of weird. Yeah, well, is how far from Houston then? Is it like the same about two, three hours? Three and a half hours from Houston. Okay. So you wouldn't be going to San Antonio to Houston and pass through you, would you? Or is that? Uh, well, yeah, doable? you just take 37. So 37 connects from Corpus to uh, San Antonio. Did, were you there the day? Like, obviously, you probably were that when Daniel showed up, right? Yeah, it was a Thursday. We had just had a, a pretty decent lunch rush. Um, and it was weird because it was about maybe two o'clock. And nobody was there. It's like it was, you know what I mean. We had just had got a lunch. I had just sat down. Uh, Claudia, who uh, she works there with me, she's my girlfriend. She helps out when she's not helping at her job. Yeah. Uh, she had made me a peanut butter jelly sandwich. I hadn't eaten that day, so I'm like, hey, I'm just gonna sit down and enjoy the sandwich with a glass of milk. And I, you know, I'm just, and then I'm just sitting there, and it just, she's like, hey, I think that guy's here. That I'm guy. Like, what guy? She's like that guy, the one that, that you know that you were talking about, who judges barbecue or, or reviews barbecue. I'm like. What the hell, you know? So I get I get up and sure enough, there he's. I, I caught him while he was taking a picture of the front. And I'm like, oh crap, he's here. You know what I mean? If he's here, what do, what do we do? You know what I mean? I was like, shut down the back window. You know what I mean? For sure. <laughs> get, yeah. So he he rolls in and just like, like, hey, let me you know looking around and let me get a brisket, uh, turkey, and pork rib plate with an extra side of uh, I think it was rice or something, and um, and a sausage wrap. So I just I, I, I open up my hot box and I'm like, you know, let me, you know, I, I find the, the, the best looking brisket, <laughs> best looking rack of ribs. And it, it didn't take long. And uh, I, I served him what I thought was our best, our best plate. You know, I put a lot of detail in it and, and um, I didn't want to go outside. I'm like, I don't want to go out there. You know what I mean? I don't know if he's going to like it. I don't know if he's yeah, going to Yeah, yeah, I know. It's a weird, yeah. It's, it's yeah, it's kind of like, what what's what's he going to say? He's a critic. He's a food critic. Mm -hmm. so he's doing his job. He's judging what. Your, your food well, I mean, is. He's so. like the food critic for Texas or the United States for barbecue. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if he says something, you know what I mean? It's just kind of like. There's a lot of power, big, yes. It was a big moment, you know what I mean? It's like this kind of was the the first step or setback of, of you know what I mean? Yeah. The next. Or like gonna the next have, learning had, curve, if possible. Yeah. We hadn't really had a, you know, a lot of publicity. This, this is what kind of set that off. Took him driving all the way from Dallas, you know, he'd come here to play, you know what I mean? So he, but he did talk to you because there's some details in his article that are kind of details that I know about, about you. Right. So he did chat with you for a bit, right? Yeah. So I went out to check, uh, the fire, you know, I was just trying not to talk to him. I was like, I didn't want to bug, you know what I mean? And, um, I went to go check the pit. We we're cooking briskets for the next day, of course. And, uh, he called me and said, Hey, you know what I mean? Are you, are you Andrew or are you butter? I forgot what he asked. I was like, yeah. And then. He's okay. He got, he got we got to we got to talk and he goes first thing is like this the brisket's awesome you know every everything is good the ribs he started talking about and and uh, the turkey and he, he started out he started recording you know that's when I was like holy crap he's gonna record our conversation you know what I mean this is, he's like all right tell me you know what I mean how you started and that's when we went over everything and uh, he wasn't too happy about the rice and the pasta salad but he uh, I remember him telling he you know sitting on a small casual he goes I I just kind of 
I put a post on Instagram calling your brisket Franklin esque. So you're gonna have a lot of people coming over here with Holy high hell. expectations. Yeah, you just kind of say the real casual. I'm like, what the hell? You know what I mean? Like, you know. So, and then after that, the next day, you know, we started. It was one day to the next. We started seeing the results of it, and ever since, you know what I mean. We just continued to see that that kind of little. City when when was that? Was that that was that early this year? He came. When was, he came in December of eighteen, but it wasn't. I remember it wasn't that cold it just didn't get very cold here often so ever since then and then we got a a call from the texas monthly magazine about the top 25 thing and did they tell you ahead of time yeah they called about three weeks we're once again we just got past the lunch list and like hey somebody's on the phone for you i'm like okay i usually expect it to be a call about a quote for a catering or somebody want to pick up some food etc etc and uh, they're like, hey, this is Texas Monthly Magazine. I'm like, okay, is this a prank call? You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? So fr- it's Austin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. Right? <laughs> but he, it was weird because getting him listing us, you know, making an article and publishing it online, that was enough for me. I'm like, yeah. yes, you know, that's you the made, first yeah. goal. Yeah, and then they're like, well, he actually made a new list. We were informed, like, hey, you're going to be featured on a list called the top 25 new barbecue restaurants in the state. And I'm like, but I thought it was a prank call. You know what I mean? I'm like, is this yeah. really tough? I'm like, yes, congratulations, yada, yada, yada. I'm like, what do you need from me? They're like, well, we just, you know, started going over specifics of like names and dates. Hours and, and all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. What not. And uh, they called us and, hey, it's going to be published on this date. But somewhere along then that there would have been a, a article of it leaked online. So they're like, hey, this is what they called. And they're like, this is what we're going to do. We're going to give you a copy of it so you can read it. But just don't show nobody else, and so we oh. were able to see the our art on, on. Well, we got to see all four pages of it. Oh, that's really, cool! About a week early, and then uh, you know that that morning, that Sunday, prior to that Monday when they released the article, we just sold out. It was completely. It was like three o'clock. We sold out, which is unusual for that. We used to sell out all, around that time. It was about five o'clock on Sundays. I kind of was like, hey, we got big news for you guys tomorrow via you know the Facebook. And then uh, we we published it on our end, like, hey, we congrats, you know, we made the top twenty five, and that was just kind of, it's we're still completely honored, you know what I mean? It's just it is crazy. Like, it is it's it's a it's a huge thing, and it's it's a it's a big thing that they've done in between the the top fifty list. So it's it means a lot, and people use this like this summer mm-hmm. should be a prime. People will be using this for their travels. Yeah, so that's kind of the reason we we uh, we started up on the. Well, getting in at the idea of the 1K, the, the yeah. smoker, I was kind of like, I wasn't know if it was foreseeing or kind of just being hopeful about it. You know what I mean? It was like, hey, we need to prep for this. I don't want to want to lose that. That's when I contacted uh, JD. I had contacted him, man, probably about a year ago, just kind of getting early, early on, like, hey, if we were to get a pit this day, you know, getting. And I just wanted to make sure that we were going to order it in time. For this. I know they, they, they take a while. It's a. It's a giant smoker coming out of yeah. nothing, you know what I mean? So uh, we were able to take advantage of that. And being that we got busier, you know, we got the, the business, we were able to you know, fund all this. Those pits aren't cheap, right? I mean, you no, know, so no, not at all. It's an important that, investment. That was, a big, that was a big accomplishment for us, being able to, to purchase that, that. You know, that's ours. And, and uh, that's a damn, it's, it's, a, it's a great spot. I can't wait to fill it up. I want to fill it up. You know what I mean? Still, well, that's also great too, because once, like for people that are making the drive from Austin to see you, you'll have food, chances are, because you have capacity exactly. now. That's important. Exactly. Yeah, no, I mean, we, we needed it at this point. It's uh, it's also helped out with like our our barbacoa. So we cooked that on Friday and Saturday nights. So Friday for, for Saturday and then Saturday we cook again for... Let's talk about your men- menu now because I think I want to talk about the barbacoa because that's I'm so interested in that. Yeah, so we got our the, the the prime brisket, our pork spare ribs, and then we do the homemade sausage now. Um, that came from uh, well, we got the turkey breast as well now, chicken halves. Yeah, barbacoa on Saturdays and Sundays only. Morning started at nine thirty. We start selling that, and then uh, the beef rib, which we do every every Sunday, the beef short rib. Um, What's the sausage? So it's a homemade pork and beef uh, blend. My brother, I. He would always make sausage for us growing up. He would get deer and you know a lot of venison and, yeah, and yeah. pork sauce, pretty good stuff. And I don't know why I didn't click on, click early on. Like, hey, maybe we could, you know, we just, yeah. we just didn't know. You know what I mean? It's just kind of like, oh, we'll just buy sausage. That was one of the things that. But then it got to be like, hey, maybe we can make our own because we were getting these 
you know, these briskets in and, you know, we trim a lot of fat off them. We, you know, we trim pork butts, pork ribs even. I was like, hey, instead yeah, of throwing it, I just gave it to my brother one day. I was like, here, take this, take some spices, uh, make a sausage. Let's see what, you know, what you can do with it. And, and uh, it took about three months to finally get one that we were both, and we all, you know, we did it. It was unanimous. We all tried it uh, in there between myself, Claudia, my mom, and him. We all needed to be, you know, yeah. will this. And we finally came up with the recipe that we felt that could sell. And then along the way, we came up with the same recipe, the jalapeno blend that I actually like better. Very mild. It's got a very good the jalapeno. Uh, uh, I'm sure it's great. Yeah, we've been running with that full time since. It's it's pretty fair. It's becoming, it's usually the first thing we run out of. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, so um, if you come in on Saturday or Sunday, our busier day is past 2 or 3 o'clock, you run the risk of not to try it, yeah. I think I had read that you guys, the tortillas, you guys make your own tortillas? My mom makes the tortillas. So my mom's been helping out there since How the cool beginning. This, <laughs> well, it's, it's as cool as working with your mom every day. You know, <laughs> so, no, I mean, she's been. Now, I mean, it's one, cool that she's making something like, it's from fruit bit, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, when we opened up, we're like, "Hey, let's just serve food that we like." And that what we were kind of used to growing up, and the way we did it was with you know tortilla, the brisket taco, which is something that my dad. So he had he actually had a restaurant in Mathis growing up, but it was a it was a taqueria, Mexican food. Oh, cool. Okay. Type style. So he, but being that he did catering and competitions on the side, he threw a brisket taco on the menu. It turned out it was one of his best sellers, and it was just you know it's a, a homemade tortilla with the brisket, pickles, onions, sauce. You know what I mean? Sounds so it's just, yeah, it's just a brisket sandwich and a tortilla, basically. Uh, but it's a damn good seller. You know what I mean? It's 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 a really good meal too. It's a it's a brisket taco. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing yeah. bad about it. So you make she makes flour and corn tortillas, right? So she makes the the flour. Okay. Yeah, not not the corn. But so when she started early on, I was uh, when we started early on, I just told her, hey, mom, you want to help out a couple weeks? I hire somebody else after that. And here she is. You know, so come August fourth, uh, that's a Sunday. We're having a uh, we're having a two year bash, by the oh, way. Cool. But uh, but that's her retirement. So we we set a date. And we're like, hey, you know what I mean? This is gonna be it for her. So she. So it's gonna be a, t- a two year plus a retirement party. That's kind of yeah, cool. yeah, that's really exactly. cool. Two year retirement party. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, other than that, we just kind of kept the basic with the meats. Um, the sandwiches, we have a couple of sandwiches that people like, like I said, they're, they're big sellers. They like the chop brisket. And then uh, sides wise, what do you have for sides? So we have, uh, what we, the sides we're running with today are brisket beans. We started with the pinto bean, the salt pork pinto bean, right? Yeah. Um, it was kind of, kind of basic. And that's another thing that Daniel hit on, you know, they, they said they're pretty good. So along the way, what we started doing is, uh, we changed it up a little bit. We, we changed the rub that went in there, kept it from more of a basic to more of like a, it's got a few more spices in there now. Yeah. Instead of bacon, we put brisket. Anytime we make a lot of sandwiches, a lot of chopped sandwiches. So anytime there's a little bit of chop, it goes into the beans. So nice. the beans actually get better as the day goes on. A lot That's of people don't know. Yeah. So I mean, the beans you can eat by himself. We have a homemade uh, mustard and mayo based potato salad. It's predominantly mustard. Okay. Pickles only. Very tangy. Very cold. Uh, it's more whip. We're, we're whipping it more these days. It's just oh, I love. I love the potato salad, the Spanish rice, which is something that's more, you know, Southern that we grew up eating, you know, with the brisket, rice beans, and, you know, tortillas, that type of thing. So we kind of just left that alone. Nice. And my mom, my mom loves a, a pasta salad. So we, we started trying that out. And those are the kind of ones that we, we stuck pasta with. pasta salad on a hot day is really good. Yeah, you can eat it by itself. Uh, just kind of cold. It has some chopped veggies in there, like cucumber and whatnot. Yeah. And then. My dad had been bugging me about the barbacoa since we opened. Hey, try the barbacoa. It'll sell. It'll sell. I'm like, I don't want to do that. I just, I want to keep it kind of traditional. And, and then so one day I was like, I, I talked to my, my, uh, my Cisco rep, Paul, and I told him, hey, send me some, some send me some beef cheeks. You know what I mean? I'm going to attempt this. I'm going to smoke them and, you know, cook them a way that I, that I kind of know how. And uh, we tried it out and I immediately fell in love with it. Like, wow, so it's a beef, beef cheek barbacoa. It's a beef cheek barbacoa. Oh. All we do is just, we hit it with a little bit of smoke, very simple seasoning, and then we kind of uh, we wrap it up as you would like a, a brisket, and it cooks all night. So uh, it cooks a full about 22 hours almost. Wow. If you, yeah, so we kind of go real slow with it. Um, when when we get done with the briskets at nighttime, the guys that are there, they'll close it in, and, and the barbacoa will stay in the pit, so it just kind of has that real long, gradual rest time, and then... Oh, oh. Uh, yeah. 
when Rob gets there, who's our morning time pit master around uh, 4 a.m., he pulls it and sets it in, in our hot box for us, and then uh, we start selling it about 9, 9.30. Do people well, buy it by the pound, is that, or by an order? So we or? sell it by the half. We try to sell it by the half in full time. We have a lot of people that come in just want you know want to talk about. We try to sell it like a more of a package type. So it comes with um, your choice of corner flour tortillas enough to accommodate the pounder, half pounder, whatever two pounds, four pound people have gotten one time, um, and enough uh, of homemade salsa. My brother Balenta, who the guy, he makes it. He actually is the one that makes a sausage. He cases it for the so he makes the salsa and then our homemade pico de gallo oh, from uh, yeah it's a it's a it's a great way we we eat it you know, that's one of the things that we'll still eat on Saturdays and sun some Sunday ridiculously yeah, good it's a it's a good breakfast it's a good yeah. breakfast and then we do the beef rib on Sunday the beef short rib um, Sundays only that is a it's kind of a I think it's the best thing we sell but they're, they're pricey they're pricey yeah. you know what I mean. So we we sell them for around twenty dollars a pound, and they average anywhere from a pound and three, you know, three tenths yeah, to. Yeah. I've, I've sold one at two pounds before. I would really like to start selling them on Saturdays as well, but um, I'm, I'm still I'm still kind of iffy on that one yeah, yeah. right now. The margins are so low, and you know, there's been times yeah, we just people. I don't sold. think people realize how low the margins are on beef short ribs. It's not on beef in general. On, on yeah, beef yeah, in general. Like- Especially the sword that those are uh, those are up there. Those yeah. are kind of you know, weird how how high those are. Do you have dessert? Too? We're we're just kind of, we're trying it, but not quite. The building that we're in, uh, <laughs> it's an old tax it's an old tax office. It's about I think the inside is about twelve by twenty. Um, we're we're crammed in there. You know what I yeah, mean? So, so we don't have a lot sense of right now. Not right now, but uh, eventually yes, eventually yes. And what are your hours? So we open up Wednesday at 11 to 7 or sell out. Um, same thing on Thursday, Friday. Saturday, come Saturday and Sunday, it's 9.30. Uh, we start selling the barbacoa, and uh, and we have briskets ready at that time as well at 9.30. Wow. And then we start selling everything else as as it comes out of as the pit. Right, yeah. yeah, we'll have people coming at 10 o'clock, and I get ribs, and I'm, you know, hey, Rob, how the ribs look? He's like, yeah, 10 minutes, or, you know, they're resting, and, you know, so the people are pretty understanding, but by eleven we have everything. Ready. So, so Wednesday through Sunday, do you guys? And but Saturdays and Sundays now you're selling out like crazy. Huh? Yeah, Saturdays and Sundays have always been the, uh, the the busier business days. I mean, it's a it, there's a lake in Mathis, um, so it's especially now summertime. You got a lot of people traveling through. Yeah, I saw that when I was pulling up the map. I saw it. It's uh, west, right, west of Mathis. Yeah, it's about maybe two miles outside of outside of town, and uh, I mean, it's something that we grew up in. Uh, Born and raised there, it's just you know what I mean. So, but we realize a lot of people come from out of town, and they love barbecue, you know. And, and it's we've been fortunate enough to have the the publicity to Texas Monthly that hey, we saw the article. Yeah. Oh, and then I wanted to go get back to the, the name Butters. It's can you explain oh, that, okay. the origin of that? So we didn't we weren't sure what to call the place. Uh, we didn't we didn't know we didn't have a name for it yet. But that's actually my nickname is 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 Butters. Um, it came from. I was a a big baby, so they they said I looked like a butterball turkey when I was born. It was like, uh, yeah, so it stuck. It stuck. My uncle Mike, my late uncle Mike, gave that one to me, and it stuck ever since. Anybody from teachers, and best friend, friends, that's kind of how they knew me. They call you butters or butterball. Butter, just butter, or butter, <laughs> different variations of. It. So then we were kind of deciding the name, but like Claudia, uh, she goes, just call it butters. I'm like, hey, you know, that's kind of kind of got a nice. I like that. You know, ring to it. So we we just call it say call it butter's barbecue. So well, isn't like isn't there a phrase like it's like butter? Like it's like something's like yeah. Butter, like if it's people think that they're like oh, do you use butter in your recipe? Like, oh, yeah, we actually do, but it's not the reason why. It's just we get that a lot. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm so happy. Like this is an interesting. I think people will find your journey interesting because it wasn't like something <laughs> deliberate. It kind of happened along the way, and you used resources and you figured out things and you. And you've even like you how you found your location. I think it, it's it's great because there's a lot of people that listen to this that are future restaurant owners, or they think about it, or they you know they're barbecuing on the side and they want to do this. And do you? It's it's a lot of work though, right? Oh yeah. I, once we started, I, I just kind of had a newfound respect for not only you know business owners, small business owners, and um, and restaurant owners. P- uh, people want good food. You know that's that's the bottom line. We we. We eat every so they they want good food and 
barbecue is is it's tough you know mm-hmm. if you're doing it the way we do it with you know real real wood with the real pit um trying to keep that quality consistent the consistency day, is tough yeah day in and day out so um i've never owned a restaurant before i've never owned a business before this is just kind of all new to me and new to this and to my crew and i so it's kind of like my guess is just as good as theirs yeah. i just happen to love barbecue so um we that it's kind of just kind of like a, a a group type thing so just trying to keep it consistent and um selling a product that people want at a at a an, at an affordable price you know what yeah. i mean it's been been that little ongoing you know people trying to serve the quality but trying to keep it cost effective at least we you know doing daily specials you know what I mean? And then meantime, the beef market is always up and down, up and down, yeah. up and down. So. You need to make sure you price it properly so that way you don't go out of business. Yeah, exactly. Exactly that. So we, we're, it's, it's, we're, we're always kind of looking for ways to improve, whether it be from the business standpoint to down to a cooking standpoint. We, yeah. we, we still try to look for new ways, new ideas, new fun things, new resting techniques. I remember um, we changed up our resting techniques on the brisket and we started getting better results. You know what I mean? Oh, that's great. Yeah, resting them a little longer, uh, how we wrap them, just things things along that nature. It's still all new to us. We're still seeing new things almost weekly or, or, or daily and taking it all in stride. You know what I mean? Well, that's – and, and I'm hoping that from people listening to this who watch this, they want to – will want to make the drive and give you guys yeah. a chance because, number one, the food sounds fantastic. It does. And yeah. Yeah. And to meet you and your crew, that's you know, that's that's a fun trip for people. Yeah, no, they, they they get a kick out of it. We get a lot of we get a lot of good reviews on on you know the we try to be very you know uh, customer service friendly mm-hmm. and you know try to treat everybody the same. It doesn't matter if you come to get a chopped sandwich or you're gonna come get a, a family package to feed twelve people. You know yeah. we're gonna kind of give you and just kind of give that attention to detail to every every plate, every sandwich, every everything. You know what I mean? It all. I, I I cut the meat daily, so luckily for for myself, I get to see what's Everything. going. You know, so there's been times where I've been like, hey, I don't like the way this this brisket looks. I'm gonna take the loss on this, save it for chopped beef or something. And and uh, I, I I care about customer service right now. This was early on, like, hey, I'd rather keep them as a customer than serving this food. I don't care about the product at this point. I I need to to kind of build the name and and ever since then, it's just kind of just. It's been a learning process. We, uh, we still, I still think our best days are ahead of us. You know, I plan, we plan on having a, a real establishment right now. We just have outdoor seating. Um, so one way or another, I want to get a place where people can come sit down. It's hot down here in South Texas. Yeah. You need somewhere that kind of cool. <laughs> a few weeks ago. Yeah. A few weeks ago, we, we were actually in South Texas. It was actually hotter than it was in Death Valley. It was Wicked hot. You're talking about 99, 100 degrees, and then the heat index of like 114. Oh it was miserable. God. A lot of people didn't come out and sit out to eat, and I, I mean, I understood why. I want them to know that nobody feels worse about that than us. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I would love to just go and build this giant type restaurant and everything, but it's just not feasible right now. I'd rather. Well, I think you will. I think you're on the road. I think for sure. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the that's kind of the goal. Like I said, I, I still like we have the capacity now being with with the the new pit, and we have our old smokers, so. If hopefully you know, you just kind of keep keeps yeah. seeing that increase like we have been recently since the article came out. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time and for sharing your story. And I can't wait to visit you. I'm glad we finally got to do it, man. It was, yeah, it was fun. it's awesome. And I'll, and I'll I'll text you when I'm in town, so that way because I'll come down from Austin for sure. Yeah, I would. I, would, I, would, I really really want to visit you. So that's um, this is really cool. Appreciate that. Good. Thank you. Yeah, have a, have a great week, and uh, and I'll talk to you very soon. Yeah, thanks a lot, Kevin. We'll see you.